Okay, so Scenic would like to talk to our members about something near and dear to everyone's heart. One of the most important things in our lives is our ability to get health care, go to the doctor and so Absolutely. forth when we need to. And so we have our Scenic healthcare expert, Chuck Stone, here to answer questions about some very important matters that are happening with the health plan. Chuck, tell us what's happening. Basically, Artis, what the state health plan staff are proposing to the Board of Trustees is that they eliminate the PP, enhanced PPO 8020, which is the plan that most active state employees take and most early retirees take. That's the option they select. And they're going to force state employees to take one of two remaining options. One is the PPO 7030, which is not actually a 7030 plan. It's a 6040 plan if you look at federal government requirements, or a high deductible consumer directed health plan that only 5% of the members have opted to take. So that's a fairly massive issue for state employees, at, at least with scenic membership, the 8020 is not only something very important to the membership, it's the number one policy platform objective to keep it, but not just to keep it, but to have it be premium free was the number one objective. And now you're telling me not only not have it be premium free, not have an 80-20 at all. Artists, the changes to the state health plan in the past six years have had a drastic impact on the pocketbooks of state employees and teachers. And what they have done is cost shifted those costs to the plan members. They've put in premiums, they put in premium surcharges for wellness activities, and they've increased deductibles and co-pays. They created the Consumer Directed Health Plan when they didn't get enough people to sign up for it according to their standard. Now they're saying, well, let's do away with the 8020 so we can force them to take the Consumer Directed but Health Plan. Isn't the contention of the state health plan that health care costs are going up everywhere? And so it's kind of tough, but state employees have to accept that our costs are going to go up too. Is there another way to handle this? Artists, there's absolutely another way. We have repeatedly proposed to the state health plan that they do exactly what the Department of Corrections, Department of Public Safety now, did for the prison system. The prison system went out there and contracted with the hospitals and saved tens of millions of dollars per year because they linked it to Medicaid rates. What we have proposed is linking reimbursements to Medicare rates Siegel, the consultants to the state health plan, found we overpay hospitals for outpatient care by 35%. If you extrapolate the data, we're wasting a quarter of a billion dollars per year in the state health plan, and it's time that the Board of Trustees and or the General Assembly, if that's who it takes to get it done, says to the state health plan, look, we're going to stop wasting a quarter of a billion dollars a year and get the rates down to where they need to be. Okay, so you bring up the General Assembly, and the General Assembly's pretty abuzz about this issue right now because they seemed surprised, and yet that's not what the health plan was, was really indicating the other night when we were at the meeting. Artis, you're correct. The state health plan brought the General Assembly into this because they had a slide and it said the reason that they're proposing these changes is because the General Assembly uh, had language in the budget says the state health plan is supposed to look um, for additional changes to the health plan to create sufficient savings so the General Assembly doesn't have to uh, appropriate what would otherwise be required for the 2017 19 budget, that it would reduce the amount of that appropriation. But the state health plan, as they have done repeatedly over the past six years, is saying, well, the only way we can do that is to take it out of the pockets of state employees by giving them inferior products. These proposals are going to make the state health plan the worst state health plan in the United States of America. And every taxpayer, every citizen, ought to be outraged, not just state employees and not just state health plan members. So for scenic members, what what is there to do? Artists, 
generally I would say they need to call the State Health Plan Board of Trustee members. But there's a problem with that because the only way to contact them, the decision was made several years ago, State Health Plan Board of Trustees members, they would not post any phone numbers or addresses on the website, not even emails. So all correspondence or communications to them has to go through the State Health Plan Office. So they get to decide whether those Board of Trustee members get any communication or not. Very convenient for them, isn't it? So what plan members need to do, and taxpayers, is to call their legislators and say, what is going on here and why is the state wasting a quarter of a billion dollars per year when there's a very simple fix? Do the same thing that we do for prison inmates. Aren't state employees at least equal to prison inmates? I mean, Okay, so the scenic lobbying staff has been in contact with dozens of lobbyists today, and again, it seems like they are also unhappy with the idea that the 80-20 would go away, but when does this get decided once and for all? This is supposed to be voted on next Friday, February the 5th, and the uh, one, uh, one Board of Trustees member raised an objection about this, and just say the standard procedure that they always push the Board of Trustees. They say, well, we've got to go and make a decision because otherwise it won't be time to get everything implemented, get product information printed up and distributed. So we've got to vote on it now yeah. in early February. So they, there's this constant push to push the Board of Trustees in a certain direction. Okay. Well, I know, um, like I said, past president Charles Johnson, past president of Scenic, is on the board, and he, he fought pretty hard the other night, but I, I certainly hope maybe some of the other board members will hear from state employees and teachers and retirees. Artist Charles Johnson, in all honesty, was the only one that was speaking up for low-salary employees, the only one that understands that consumer-directed health plans as RAND Corporation as Kaiser Health um, Foundation has found that low income and people with disabilities, people with chronic con medical conditions, suffer under high deductible consumer-directed health plans. And the board seems oblivious to that fact. Charles is the one who understands that. He's the one who gets that. So boiling this down, if the legislature were to come in and give a huge raise this year, the 80-20 went away, and the other two options were the only thing state employees have, that raise would pretty much get eaten up by the plan, right? Basically, I put it in one pocket and took it out the other, yes. Pretty serious business, and y'all heard it from Chuck Stone, Scenic's expert on health care, and one of the greatest experts on health care in this state. Y'all contact your legislators, contact the health, health plan board of trustees, and please call the scenic office if you have more questions. And artists, one final comment. If they do this to the state health plan, we need state license plates that read, first in flight, last in health. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs>